Um, hello, so my name is Claire. I'm a student at Hawthorne. And so I have a question regarding Neuralink and going to space. So um, you have launched rockets to Mars. And I was wondering what you thought the role of like neuroscience oh, and your BCI I have not are. launched rockets to Mars yet. Uh, aspirationally, that was the goal. That is the goal, but we have not yet. In fact, it's a bit embarrassing. We have not yet launched a rocket to Mars, but we will. Yeah, oh, wait, I know. I mean, what wait, is the role wait, wait. of, yeah. There's a car. There's a car. <laughs> True. <laughs> said, and there's a person floating around. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The, it, yes. There is a, there is. It's technically a tail in orbit around Earth and Mars. Uh, so, yes. Didn't get to Mars itself, but it's Mars adjacent. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so, I was what, wondering what you thought, like, the role of neuroscience or BCIs would be in space travel, or are you think they're, like, unrelated entities? Um, I think that the brain to peer interface is extremely important. Um, uh, for uh, essentially achieving symbiosis with AI uh, because we're input-output limited. We're, we're effectively a cyborg right now where the, the, you know, the, your, your phone or computer is an extension of yourself, but the, your, your input is, is bounded by the screen and your output is bounded by your thumbs or, or fingers. So effectively over time, we would drift away from a machine intelligence. Um, we have a high bandwidth neural interface, then uh, we can be, we can solve the, the IO problem and go along for the ride symbiotically. Um, just as our cortex and our limbic system um, are quite happy together, you know, and, and uh, I've not met anyone who wants to delete their cortex or the limbic system, um, even though the cortex is, in principle, much, much smarter than the limbic system. And mostly the cortex is trying to make the limbic system happy. Um, <laughs> so so, so, so we, we could have a tertiary layer. And we, in fact, like I said, we have a tertiary layer uh, in silicon, but, but the communication bandwidth to that, ter that silicon tertiary layer is, um, is very constrained. It's like, at this point, trying to, you know, in a pool using a straw. It, it's very, it's a very thin pipe. Um, yeah, much it's, it's very, Yes, and so, and so I think that's quite important. And of course, along the way with the brain-computer interface, we would um, also solve a lot of, uh, of brain injuries, um, uh, as well as like, as you, as you get old, you sort of lose your memory. Well, we could restore your memory um, and, you know, we could it, it could really play a big role in, in senility um, and in have a stroke or um, if there's something congenital. We, we could, that all could be fixed with a brain computer interface by creating a neural sh neural shunt. You could also like restore um, functionality of limbs by you know having like so like sort of a a, a neural um, and, and and then having essentially a microcontroller in in the in the muscle regions um and so you could restore full limb movement